Hello, and welcome to the Reykjavik News Desk. I'm Andy Sophia Fontaine, and these are the week's top stories in Iceland. If you like the content that you see here, be sure and like and subscribe. And if you really like the content that you see here, check out the Patreon link in the description below to see what kind of goodies you can get just for kicking a little extra coin our way. But now, the week's top stories. Some tremors were recorded in Myrdalsjökull on Thursday morning, two of them with a magnitude greater than four. Some of these tremors were located in the caldera of the volcano Katla. As a result, a yellow warning has been put into effect for flying over Katla. Now, all that this means is that the volcano is showing activity other than complete and total dormancy. There are no signs, I repeat, there are no signs of an impending volcanic eruption or glacial flooding. That said, Kristin Jonsdottir of the Icelandic Met Office points out that we haven't seen this type of seismic activity in and around Katla since 2016. And there is always, of course, the possibility that this activity may lead to glacial flooding or, in the worst case, a volcanic eruption. Now, this volcano last erupted in 1918 and has been haunting us ever since. For example, during the 2010 Eyjafjallajökull eruption, our president at the time, Olavur Ragnar Grimson, in a now infamous interview, um, was asked about this eruption, and he had said, oh, if you think this is bad, you ain't seen nothing yet. You just wait until Katla erupts. You know, and we were all very, very grateful for those remarks. Neither the Eyjafjallajökull eruptions nor the more recent eruptions on the Reykjanes Peninsula hurt anybody. In fact, they were quite a boon to our tourism industry. That said, Katla could be a different story altogether, so scientists are monitoring the situation very closely. As with all things volcanic, Katla is impossible to predict. You, know, you may hear people say, as I've said in other videos, you may hear people say that this or that volcano is overdue for an eruption. Volcanoes, they, they don't work this way. You know, they, they erupt when they want to erupt. They don't give as much advance warning either. There might be some like seismic activity leading up to an eruption that gives us an idea that, okay, now we should pay more attention to this volcano right now. But they erupt whenever they want to. And there is absolutely no such thing as a volcano being overdue for an eruption. So keep that in mind. And some sadder news. Two men are in police custody in South Iceland, suspected of being connected to the death of a young woman who was found dead in her home on April 27th in Selvos. Her sister has since come forward on social media and in a brief interview to emphasize that her sister never smoked, nor drank, nor used drugs of any kind. She added that she trusts the police to get to the bottom of what happened. The Council of Europe Summit will be held in Reykjavik from May 15th to May 17th, and for most people that live in the city, the whole thing is... Frankly, a headache. First of all, in the days leading up to this, there have been a number of net attacks on Icelandic websites that represent Icelandic businesses, specifically in tourism and other industries. So hackers are already underway trying to break into Icelandic websites in the lead up to this to basically confuse and frustrate the whole process of getting this summit underway. Second of all, this here is a map of downtown Reykjavik with the pink areas representing the areas that will be shut off to everybody and the orange representing the areas that will be shut off to all vehicular traffic. As you can see, this comprises a pretty large chunk of downtown that we won't be able to access on the 16th or the 17th. Even electric scooters are going to be disabled in these areas as will the use of drones. Furthermore, the chair of the Icelandic Environment Association, Thorgeir Thorbjarnadottir, has pointed out that a bunch of world leaders arriving in Iceland by private jet to discuss the impact of climate change and how to combat human-driven climate change is pretty hypocritical. In point of fact, there are going to be some 50, 50 private jets landing in Reykjavik airport. And this airport is just south of downtown Reykjavik, and I live pretty close to there, so I'm expecting that it's going to be very, very noisy and really difficult to navigate anywhere in the area for all the police and security that are there. So that's just something that those of us who live in and around the airport are going to have to deal with. This is yet another in-person meeting that could have been a Zoom call. Finally, former chief morale officer for the Reykjavik grapevine, Pauliana Pulsudotir has found herself a new job. Former editor of Grapevine, Vala Gretason, announced this on Twitter. Polly, as she is better known, will be a psychological support dog working as a volunteer at the behest of the Icelandic Red Cross. 
Uh, I've linked the tweet in in the description so you can go and wish Polly well. Frankly, I'm amazed that she was able to find any new job in this economy. I also have some content news to report. The results of the viewer poll are in. Now, in case you weren't aware, the viewer poll is on my Patreon, and it's visible to $15 and $20 patrons who can also vote in this poll. And the new single topic video that I will be doing is five weird moments in Icelandic history. I'm really, really, really looking forward to doing this because Iceland has a very long and colorful history. And while it's going to be very challenging to narrow this down to just five stories, I'm sure it's going to be a lot of fun to make, and I hope it's going to be a lot of fun and very educational for you to watch. In any event, that's the week's top stories in Iceland. Again, if you like the content that you see here, be sure and like and subscribe. And if you really like the content that you see here, check out the Patreon link in the description below, which reminds me, I want to thank Corinne Vasquez, Marion Ward, Christopher Hunter, Marion Morris, and Kimberly McDaniel for being patrons on the $20 level, Laura Johnson for being a patron on the $15 level, and Stephen Ellis and Vivi Carvalho Schaffner for being patrons on the $10 level. You folks rock. That's all for me. Be good to each other.